Many anglers do not have much confidence to fish a jerkbait due to many different factors. This could range from confusion on how to fish it, what type of line to use, what type of rod, and where you should fish the jerkbait. In this video, I'm going to tell you five common jerkbait mistakes that I see many bass anglers making all the time. These five tips will help you better understand how to fish a jerkbait, I promise you that. Many of these common jerkbait mistakes are easy to fix and will catch you loads more of bass and potentially your personal best. So make sure you stay tuned to the video and let me know what you think about these five jerkbait tips down in the comment section below. One of the most important things to consider when fishing a jerkbait is the retrieval speed. The jerkbait resembles a dying bait fish when you are fishing it throughout the water column and your retrieval speed will play a big factor in how your jerkbait loads in the water. The retrieval speed can make the difference between you getting bites that day or getting skunked. This is especially important in the winter time whenever the water temperature drops. You will want to slow down your retrieve and pause your jerkbait for 10 to 30 seconds generally because most forage that the bass will feed on saves as much energy as possible by not moving as fast. However, in the warmer months, you do not have to fish the jerkbait as slowly because bass will be more willing to chase down a meal. Regardless of the time of year you are fishing the jerkbait, bass will normally buy it on the pause. It is essential for you to make sure that you pause your jerkbait for long enough to entice the bass to bite. Also, it is important to change up your retrieve and not fish it the same every cast. By changing up your cadence, you'll be able to tune in on what speed the bass will strike at the most. By keeping these tips in mind, you can greatly improve how many bass you will catch on your local body of water. When fishing a jerkbait, it is important to consider what type of line you're using and the pound test you're fishing with. When you are fishing a jerkbait, it is important for you to use fluorocarbon line. The reason why you want to use fluorocarbon line is because fluorocarbon line sinks when you're fishing with it, unlike mono and braid that floats. It is also important that you have the right size line when fishing the jerkbait. Generally, you will want to use as light of line as you can get away with, while also not using too light of line that the fish will break off. Personally, I like to use anywhere between eight pound test and 12 pound test fluorocarbon line when fishing the jerkbait. The sweet spot being 10 pound test fluorocarbon carbon line. This is because the thicker diameter your line is, the less it will sink. So use an 8 pound test will sink deeper compared to 12 pound tests, which will not sink as deep. It is very situational based depending on what conditions you are fishing in, but it is a good rule of thumb to follow and to stick to. Many anglers think that you have to use a specific setup when fishing the jerkbait. There are a few general guidelines that I like to go by when choosing a jerkbait rod. The first thing I would consider would be rod length. Rod length is important when picking out a jerkbait rod, but I like to use a seven foot rod so I can cast further and still work the lure well. When it comes down to the action of the rod, I like to use a medium fast personally, but some people like a little bit more bend to the rod and use a medium moderate fast action. This is very dependent on how you want your rod to feel when you are using a jerkbait. However, it is important to have some bend to your rod when fishing the jerkbait due to the fact of using treble hooks. Having more bend to your rod will help keep the fish pinned better and will greatly improve how many fish you catch. Another thing to consider when choosing the right rod is if you are using a bait caster or spinning rod. In most scenarios, I like to use a bait caster, but I will use a spinning rod in some scenarios. I will use a spinning rod when I want to get my bait down deeper because most of the time I have eight pound test on my spinning rod and 10 to 12 pound test on my bait caster. Let me know down below what type of rod you like to use when fishing a jerkbait. Many time anglers are not fishing a jerkbait in the correct spot and this can greatly impact the quantity and the quality of the bass you catch. When fishing a jerkbait, there is one simple question you have to ask yourself to determine if you're fishing in the correct spot or not. It is important to ask yourself if there are bass feeding on any type of forage where you're fishing at. By determining this, you can key in on where the bass are feeding at and greatly increase the quality and the quantity of the bass you will catch. One of my favorite times to fish the jerkbait is whenever I see bass blowing up on bait fish. I like to work my jerkbait near or through the bait ball and make it look like one breaking away from the rest of them. By making my jerkbait look like it's dying will normally trigger a bite. I also like to fish a jerkbait over pretty much any type of structure to trigger a bass to bite. It is also important to determine if you are fishing a jerkbait at the correct depth or not. If you do not have electronics on your boat, this can be difficult to determine. However, 
You can use trial and error to determine what depth you get the most bites at. However, in most scenarios, I like for my jerkbait to dive to four to six feet, but we'll use deeper diving jerkbaits depending on how deep the bait fish are. It is very important to match the hatch when fishing your jerkbait to the forage in your local body of water. Where I'm at here in North Carolina, I like to use shad, blueback herring, minnow, trout, and perch patterns when I fish a jerkbait. However, this is very dependent on where you are fishing net in the country and the bass will not feed on the same forage every single day. Some days they will feed on minnows and other days they could be feeding up on shad or perch. It just really depends. When going out on your local body of water it is important to observe the different bait fish you see throughout the day and this will help you determine what type of pattern to imitate for that day. Also, if you catch a fish and it spits out some shad, it's probably a safe bet to throw a shad pattern to trick the bass into biting. Whenever I go out on the water, I like to try to pick up on these tiny details to help me determine what patterns to throw. Let me know down below what your favorite pattern to throw is in your local body of water. These are the top five mistakes people make when using the jerk bait. Following these tips will greatly increase the quantity and the quality of the bass you catch. Let me know if this video helped you in the comment section down below. I love to see it whenever I'm looking through my comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button to help the video in the YouTube algorithm so more people can get recommended this video. If you are not subscribed, I would love to have you join the channel. It would mean the world to me. I plan on doing more videos like these in the future, releasing one every Tuesday and Thursday. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.